What's good, everybody? My name is Alchemy. Welcome to the channel. Today, you and I are going to be taking a journey within Current, making a patch from scratch. Now, I'm sure that if you're watching this, you most likely have already seen the review on this. That kind of just gives you a gloss of the basic features. But what I want to do is maybe some candid sound design. I don't know what I'm going to make today. Don't know if it's even going to be cool or not. I actually, if it's not cool, I probably will end up uploading this video. But I do want to do some stuff from scratch that's not going to be so discussion-y and more so of a workflow example about what it would be that I would be going for whenever I try to make stuff and see if we can get, you know, something that's kind of cool out of this new synthesizer. It's also a good means for me to practice and it's also a really good indicator of like, I might know something really well in one area or know basic approaches to things. There's going to be some stuff that carries over, especially from something like Faceplant slash Serum, but also I need to figure out how to utilize the tools that are unique to current in order to sculpt new sounds, new possibilities, and just have a little bit of fun. So if that sounds interesting to you, grab yourself a coffee or you know some kind of beverage or throw me on in the background while you're washing dishes or something and let's go ahead and make some sounds. So with that, what I'm going to do is we're gonna start off by turning this all the way to zero and we are going to change this into a sine wave. All right, that's it. That's the patch. We're done. No, I'm just kidding. Let's go ahead and turn this on because this is going to be super helpful to us. The clipper on the outside. So that means that no matter what, it's not going to like, it's, it's going to try not to kill us. I don't know. I might still have some shrieky things that are happening every once in a while, but we're going to, we're going to try not to die with this. So the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to turn to oscillator B. And what I would like to do is change this all the way down and maybe just find some other kind of wavetable. I don't even really care, but let's see what this is. Sure. Let's go ahead and change the wave a bit. Something kind of like so. That seems good to me. And now what we're going to do is add in some FM from B. Sounds pretty cool. So... So I really like that. Let's go ahead and start off by changing this LFO to a randomizer here. And what we're gonna do on this is just apply this to the wave a little bit. So now what I wanna do is maybe change the voices to two and make sure that the width is at zero and let's create somewhat of a kind of Reese, but kind of soft. That sounds kind of cool. So we're definitely going to want to get some distortion on this, but before we do that, let's go ahead and set up a couple of filters for ourselves. So let me see if we go into morphing here. Nope. Sometimes I think that this is just a bug, but uh, sometimes the morph engine doesn't pop up. But what we'll do instead is just use a notch. So we will come into the cutoff here. And just let's go ahead and play around with that for a hot sec and see what we can get. And then let's go ahead and set something up here to where we are actually going to probably use a band pass, maybe like on a 12 or something. We're gonna pull up the resonance just a bit and have this go in the opposite direction of our notch here. But what we wanna do is we actually wanna pull off of this just a bit. Now, I suppose, I guess we could try a couple of different methods. I'm gonna go with the way that I know is gonna work first and I'm actually just gonna back off of the mix here just a bit. So that way we're gonna be able to allow some of the lower and higher frequencies respectively to kind of shine through. Let's go ahead and grab the pitch bin now, and we're gonna set that to the rate of this. So that way, whenever this goes up with a pitch bend, say something like here, we'll just set this to like 24. 
this will actually move faster. So we can just do something like this. And then what I want to do is just adjust it just a little bit to where maybe we're like to one eighth because it's already quite a lot of movement. So we want it to kind of somewhat match with the oscillation that's happening whenever we turn that up. So. Dope. So the number one thing that we need to get in here is we need to recover some of those harmonics that we lost. So. We're gonna go ahead and clip that. Maybe we can shape the tone with bringing some of the bass back as well, so. As you can see, I'm just kind of swapping through and then we are able to create bipolar distortion with this uh, through the different shapes that this has. It would be so cool again if we had the ability to like use a custom wave shaper or something like that, which I've actually covered on how to do in phase plant, which is really cool, but it's a lot more steps. But even still, there's quite a bit of options that we can use through this that um, still sound good. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to apply a phaser on here that should help with some of the vocal stuff that we've got, so. That actually is a really big difference on there, so I know that just moving this around a little bit is gonna help us out quite a bit. So we can randomize this just a tad, and then what I'd also like to do is, is there a low pass on here? It doesn't look like it. We definitely don't wanna leave this at 100%, and actually I think the spread on here is Okay, yeah, so let's go ahead and back off of this just a bit and let's see what that sounds like. So now that we have something like that, we can go into our Morphe EQ and we can set this up to kind of create a path that will allow us to just get some movement going on. We don't really need to do anything that's like super complicated. And I think that the more, the less complicated that you get with this stuff, the better. But just for description's sake, we're gonna set this up here and change this into a notch, kind of like so. And then what we can do is just grab some very simple movement things, kind of like this, and adjust this to kind of attack somewhere down towards that 100 region. Maybe something that's kind of goes up like this. <clears throat> Ends up coming down. We can use a little bit of this to kind of cover over here. And so now... We can use this in order to change the morphing here to create a little bit more of a of a depth. Now, what I'm thinking here, as you can see, is that I think that I'm going to need this LFO to move at a different pace than the, uh, the initial mod that we have, because this is just moving too fast. So instead, what I'm going to do is pretty much the same thing to where we're going to set the pitch bin of the rate onto this, but we're going to start from a much slower much slower and also have this go to a much, uh, a much a significantly less fast whenever this turns all the way up so that looks pretty good to me so Ooh, okay now we're getting somewhere all right so we've got a trump card in our pocket because if we use a fuse compressor on this and let's say we set this to like six bands we just honestly do this 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 then we're kind of already going to get in a ballpark of where obviously this is way too much but but let's hold off on that for j just for now just for now 
so if uh, I turn this off, then I still haven't figured out how to just remove this entirely. Oh, I just go plus. So we'll we'll come back to that. But what I want to do now is implement some of these other things, perhaps like add a little bit more distortion to this to see if we can pull some of that stuff out with just a little bit of characterization building and then get back to the other things. So. Let me see what this does. This says adjust the depth of smooth low pass filter that's applied after the distortion. So if you've got too much high end, then I think that this would be useful. I, if anything, I'm trying to find stuff that's going to bring back some of the high end. Let me see what this does. <clears throat> okay, so this is auto gain. So that means that if I turn the drive up, that it's going to uh, reduce the gain or vice versa back and forth. But I'm gonna try to make this just a little bit louder without that, so. So that sounds pretty cool. Let's go ahead and add a cluster delay to this. And this is going to be on free. We're gonna set this to a relatively low amount and pull back off of the feedback. I'm gonna use a little bit of analog here. And then we also have, I believe, a high pass right here, which is dope. So this means that it's not going to interfere with our low end. Now I will say that depending on what you're doing, like if you're trying to make something that's how do I say, uh, experimental and just like mess with things, then sometimes you might want to use the delay on everything on the entire signal and then pull it back into mono. In this particular case, I'm going to see how far I can get without it, but just know like all the, all the choices that I'm making, it's a preference. It's not like set into stone. So... <laughs> Now what we can also do is, as you can see, this is wobbling, but we can also set a character or a behavior on the delays, which I think is really sick. Look at that, that's super cool. So within that, uh, we've got a flanger. Uh, I think that would probably be fine. We can set the depth up to like 50% and then let's just see what that does. What happens if we turn this off? So you can see that it's giving it just a little bit more of that aggressiveness. We can also pull back on the spacing, pull back on the scatter if we want to, or modulate that however we want. As you can see, when, whenever we change the ramp, we can make things bigger and smaller as a whole. But I think for me, what I'm wanting to do, sorry for the noise outside, can't control it. <laughs> what I'm wanting to do is to kind of just maybe give this a little bit of uh, ducking here. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. Let's go ahead and play with some pitching. Maybe set this to one eighth and let's see if we can get that to morph a little faster. Now, there's a couple of different things that we can do here. Like for one, we can add some more chorus to this or we can add some more uh, distortion slash EQing or filtering or anything of the sort. Let's go ahead and play around with the chorus on here to see if we can get some decent sounding movement. This chorus is really awesome. Uh, just obviously like it looks cool, but it also sounds really cool, so. Let's go ahead and set this to multiband. So we're gonna push off of this around like, say even 200 Hertz. And then we can, yeah, that's fine.
So from this, uh, we can maybe do like one more of these guys. I don't actually think that we need the morph, but what we can try to apply is the cutoff here to where this is cutting just a little bit of this off. I don't really like that sound because it's a little bit resonant and I don't want it to be like wow. I want it to be like more of a, a roaring sound. So let's go ahead and pull the resonance all the way off. We might even want to use like a morph 12 so that way the slope is a little less uh, lasery on the top end. And now that we have that, we can maybe apply just a little bit more distortion to this, just a tad. And now we can use that fuse compressor in order to bring some of this stuff back. So maybe we can, yeah, let's go ahead and start with six and then let's just go ahead and try to manipulate this and take a look at what's happening on the waveform in order to figure out how to change this in a way that's going to be more powerful uh, and louder. So you can see here that there's this huge harmonic that's right there and that's from the bandpass. So we might want to use some downwards compression to try to control that. Maybe we can bring up some of the high end here. And what I'm doing is uh, I'm just messing around with some of the low end and some of the high end just to see what happens. And remember too, like if for whatever reason you mess up, you can always restart. Uh, so it's not that big of a deal, but. Now that we have this, we can turn the ratio up on all of these just a little bit, and then we can start to push the thresholds and make this a little bit louder. I'm gonna remove the attack on here and maybe increase the release by like, I don't know, say like a hundred or so. And now what we can do is we can kind of mess with this here and just see what happens whenever we make this a little bit faster. So now I want to see, cause I haven't experimented with this, but I want to see what happens if we set this to a curve and then what happens if on this, we go back to LFO. Okay, so if you change this, unfortunately, uh, you lose the modulation that you have. So, I, I mean, I could understand why, but sometimes in some cases you might just want to set up a multi-stage envelope or something. But something that is really cool about this is that you can just change this. And that's something that I've been asking for phase plan forever. It sucks that you, you don't lose the modulation destinations, you lose whatever is modulating this modular in particular. But if I wanted to change this now into something, say, kind of like this and actually have a set pattern, say something like here, and then I'm just going to do it on here too because it's not that big of a deal to change the, um, the pitch bin. But if I set this to a curve and then just kind of maybe give ourselves some kind of interesting shape, kind of like so, then now this is gonna be set every single time and we can create an expectation for this to happen. So. so maybe on this we want to. You know, maybe here I want to modulate this just a little bit like so. And as you can see, we can get into something that is uh, more controlled. And then of course, if I wanna go back to the LFO or whatever, we can, could just do that. So we could set this to be kind of fast, set this to be kind of slow, cause this should be controlling the morphs. So maybe a little bit faster, so. Thank you. 
maybe we can set that to kind of oscillate a little faster with the detune movement. So maybe we can set this to be backwards. So now this is going down and up. And then now that I have something like this, I mean, we can go in and just change whatever we want to with this really. I typically have been going for more simple waveforms uh, with sine waves and just adding into sine waves as a whole. But that's not to say that we could literally just pull back on this and see what happens if we were to change this into something like a saw wave. So it doesn't really matter at this point because I've already gotten all of the main stuff where I need it to be, but we still can manipulate this and try to find something that you know, is more catered towards the timbre that we're looking for. Maybe I want to back off of that hard, uh, sorry, <laughs> hybrid filter, and let's just see what happens without that low pass now. As you can tell, we're getting some crazy rumbling that's happening right now. So maybe what we might want to do is just kind of bounce back between and then redo this. And depending again on what kind of harmonics you have, you're going to want to change this. So it's not like a one size fits all, but let's see what happens if we kind of, uh, I accidentally typed in uh, E on the channel link, but. So there's a lot of stuff that's happening right here. We can kind of just boost the low end of this and back off of this, but maybe do some upwards compression and downwards compression here. And now let's go ahead and boost this up. So as you can see, it's not quite as loud, but that doesn't mean that we can't do something to control this afterwards, or we might not be, or we might be able to add more uh, distortion to it. But you see how, depending on how you change the waveform, it's going to kind of influence the decisions that you make as long as you're listening to the sound. Because even though we did lose quite a bit of volume in this, if we were to kind of push this back. see that there's a lot of energy there so sometimes you might want to push it down sometimes you might want to push it up so this is from 60 hertz all the way to 329 so maybe from here that's where we can you know apply our dip and then we can actually adjust the makeup gain if we wanted to as well so <laughs> And now suddenly, you know, just again, you got to mess with it and just kind of try to dial in these settings and figure out how to manipulate this. But, you know, we're kind of just dipping these low mids just a little bit in order to uh, control the inner modular distortion. And generally speaking, that comes from the low end and the low mids. But if something is too muddy in the low or either the lows or the low mids, then it will actually eat out all of the headroom from all of the from the rest of the frequency spectrum that kind of, well, makes it geez they're really going off aren't they that really makes it kind of like not so nice to listen to it just sounds like farts which granted this still sounds like that but even still kind of controlling that and then trying to gently raise up that high end there because we're doing so much filtering can help bring some of that back
And the other thing too, is that if we actually go back and we change some of these filters now and stuff, like this is gonna dramatically change the sound. So if we were to maybe go here, and for some reason the morph isn't working, I haven't quite figured out why, but uh, maybe if we were to even do another notch or something and change this over to a different position, so. Yeah, just lots of really nice, crispy rumbling uh, over that whole thing. And so if we were to maybe try some of the pitch bending, this isn't going to move with it, but sometimes even with something that's like on a set LFO or whatever, it might still sound kind of nice. So. So something else that we can try as well, which I've talked about in another video, is if I take the fundamental off of this and we actually open up the sub engine here, then there's a couple of things that we can do. One is we can either add some texture on top via the granular or the sampler, but two, we can replace the sub here of the fundamental and actually import it or use a very clean one here. And sometimes that's a good idea. Sometimes it's not a good idea. I typically don't do that with respaces because I really like the, the oscillating sound, but the trade-off though is that if we do this and we actually increase the width on here then we can actually make the entire signal wider while still having a clean sub so within this octave right here as as we play this it's going to kind of just be like you're not going to get as much phase oscillation when it plays a higher pitch but even still it might sound a little bit wider in some cases a little bit better because now we've spread the signal out and we've got a full frequency type of thing so So I think that as just like a regular sound, that sounds pretty cool. Maybe something that we could even do is try to give it some character by either adding some FM to the sub or through oscillator A or both. So, you know, right now we're kind of just having fun and experimenting. We were only 30 minutes in, so hopefully this is gonna kind of give you some ideas about how you can use current in order to shape some bases. Let's go ahead and set this from oscillator B as well. Okay, that was cool. Now, whenever we pitch this up, we immediately lose the fundamental. So there's that. Maybe if we add more partials, there might be more to kind of hop onto. But I do like that you can kind of control the harmonics here. It would be nice if I could just draw the harmonics in because you can only have eight partials, which I get, but um, that would be kind of cool. Uh, and then we can also set this to direct out if we want to, but let's just kind of see what else we can do with this. So you want to know what's crazy? There's nothing on the outside of this. This is all coming from current. Uh, which is wild to me because now that we have something like this, we could easily throw on like a saturator or whatever. And I'm not going to go too far into this, but we could easily throw on, you know, one of my racks from say like multi-pass or snap heave, just to give you an example about like how you can do things. But let's say we go into like a turn six or something and we find, let's do impact crater. We just turn this on stereo. And, oh, sorry, this one actually doesn't have any modulation on it. This one does, the Killer Koala, beware. So with that, now what we can do is we can toss this in here and we might need to throw another fuse compressor on here, but uh, just take a listen. So, you know, we turn that on, see what that does. Turn the stereo on. 
Go ahead and add one more fuse compressor to this just for fun and then we'll go back to the current patch but within that let's go ahead and turn this on so even without even messing with the bands just turning this up like And just charge down so anyways coming back into this there's a lot of different things that we can do after this in order to switch the sound out and what i love is that i don't actually need that external stuff because again the clipper is on the outside but we can go back into this and we can activate the granular engine if we wanted to <clears throat> we can apply fm to a granular engine we could resample this that would be another thing that would be super cool which i didn't mention in the review of like a resample to wavetable or something uh, but even still there's so many different ways to kind of morph this that there's more than enough to get into i mean if anything we could even try changing the wave scanning or the sparse with the spectral stuff to get more monstrous sounds but we've kind of already hit a point to where like we're in the ballpark of where somebody like me would want to be for the kinds of sounds that we're making so if i were to you know i don't know warp this or something let's see what that does <laughs> Maybe we can try even like a more interesting FM heat. I don't know, just a more interesting wavetable or something. But by now, I think that you should kind of get the point about how to explore with this. But this is the way that I do sound design, especially with a synth like this that kind of has like a, I don't want to say an endpoint, but a means of like, I can no longer add effects. I can no longer add anything else to it, sand stuff on the outside. Let's figure out how we can mix and match in order to continue to shape the timbre from within. So obviously that's very fat. So maybe we can make that a little bit. That's really cool. So in any case, we pretty much used every effect rack possible in order to do our shaping. And to be honest, we probably could have used half of these in order to get something cool. But just as a means of being able to collectively, you know, stack these. And that's why I think this is such a game changer between something like Serum and, and not Faceplant in particular, but uh, Serum and Vital um, is that you can have multiple instances of the same effect for one, but also throwing that kilohertz, you know, comparison in here is that while you don't have infinite effects, the effects within here are extremely high quality. So, you know, that's something that I complain about quite a bit within the kilohertz stuff is that there's a great range of kinds of effects and stuff, but they kind of seem like they're a little bit I don't really have the words to describe it. Whereas this, as you can tell, you don't have to put in as much work to get really fat sounds out of it. I just wish I had a wavetable maker. Why is there no wavetable maker? So anyways, I hope that was fun. I hope that you all learned something with how I would make a bass and something like this. And this is honestly like the fifth bass that I've made in here. So I've been tinkering and whatnot, but you know, I didn't really know what was going to come out from today. But as you can tell, I don't know, maybe I've just been doing this for a long time, but there's quite a lot of like crazy roaring, you know, ripping sounds that you can get just by setting up some filters and distortion and then, you know, changing that up. But in any case, I will probably save this patch 
I don't know if I'll do anything with it, but there's that. But if you all learned something and had a good time with me today, do me a favor and drop a like. Please uh, help me get to 20K subscribers. It's been a long time since I've done a base video, so I figure it's about time to kind of revisit this. And then, of course, if you really want to get deep and down with the kind of base stuff that I'm doing within Phase Plant, it's a very deep rabbit hole, then I suggest you check out the master classes that I have available for the Arcana members or check out my presets that I have for Faceplant. So in any case, thank you all so much. I hope that you learned something and uh, drop a comment just because. Bye, everybody.